Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back everybody. Hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today. In this video, we're going, well, we're doing a lot of sanding for one, but that's just in the beginning. Uh, but the overall uh, topic that I want to cover today is how to plan your project so that when you actually get to the finishing stages of whatever it is you're working on, you don't accidentally shoot yourself in the foot. So with that said, let's get started. I think that's enough uh, sanding for the beginning of this video. Now, as you can see here, I sanded half of the boat and I did that on purpose. Kind of coming up and looking at the bow here. Now, hopefully this is all gonna pick up in the glare here. But you see all these little, well, just basically runaway cracks all throughout the entire length of the hull. Well, to be honest, I was, yeah, kind of hoping, yeah, I think it was more wishful thinking than anything, but I was kind of hoping that all that cracking was mostly gonna be in the top layer of the paint and you know, once I got down to the actual gel coat, you know, I was hoping that that was actually gonna disappear, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Looking back here at the, uh, towards the transom of the boat here, uh, all these little lines here, now these are all, I, I, I highlighted all these with permanent marker just so that it'd actually show up on camera, because uh, if I didn't do that, well, you guys weren't gonna see anything. So, but the, the kind of patterns we're seeing here, and well, at least what I highlighted back here, that type of, of cracking is still carrying forward throughout the entire length of this hull. So I kind of see that as being like the major, major issue that uh, we're looking to kind of uh, correct here, but that's not the only thing. There's other little areas like this, uh, you know, just little, little pits and dimples, voids, that kind of thing. But I will say I'm, I'm very surprised that there, there hasn't been more voids or, or more pitting that I've run into. And you know, I, I guess that's something you're, you're gonna run into more often on like say newer boats. And by newer, I'm thinking, I don't know, 15, maybe 10, 15, 20 years old. Um, you don't see that quite as much as is evident here, quite as much on older boats because to be perfectly honest, older boats, they were, they were just better built. Uh, for the most part, they were overbuilt and they were, again, for the most part, they were all hand laid. So just the quality of the construction itself in general, is just much, much better than what you're able to get now out of, uh, typically speaking, I mean, this is just kind of a general umbrella term, uh, but what you're gonna find, you know, new-ish uh, today, because right now they're using uh, not the best glass, you know, they're using basically chopper guns, they're just spraying shredded chop strand matting into a mold, whereas on, on, on this boat in particular, they're using an actual matting. For the most part, there wasn't any chop strand matting used on this boat, uh, unless it's beneath this layer, uh, but for your, for the most part, what I'm seeing here, it's a fairly heavy, heavy uh, woven uh, fabric that they were using here. So generally speaking, if I ever had the option of, okay, I could have this brand new boat uh, that was brand new, or an older boat that's been restored, I, I guess, correctly, uh, I'm going to take the older boat every time, uh, just because, like I said, it's, they're, overall, they're better built using better materials. 
Okay, but enough yapping about that. So we covered the voids there. Uh, moving forward, again, there's just a lot of little general scrapes, scratches, that kind of thing. It, because this thing has been beached quite a bit, uh, worn down to basically bare glass over there. And then as we get up forward here, there's been a couple of, of uh, things that have happened to this particular area over the years. Uh, right here, this is, well, this looks like an old repair. And the reason I am saying that is because, well, this is a different type of glass than what was used on the hull. That's original, not so much. And just the fact that there's different color, you know, different compounds in here. So you've got, uh, who knows what they, what, what they use, but I'm guessing some kind of a Bondo type material. And uh, I don't know, who knows, maybe they put gel coat over top of it, try and dress it up a little bit, but they actually never got the repair done, at least correctly, or at least in its entirety, because, well, there's still a big ass giant crack <laughs> stemming out from underneath this repair area. And then probably the most severe damage that we got on this hull is this hole. Now this is basically a hole completely through the hull. And I suspect that was actually uh, caused by sitting on the trailer uncovered, again, up in northern Wisconsin, basically the boat getting full of snow, freezing, having who knows how many extra thousands of pounds added on top of the boat, and just the front roller on this uh, trailer, it just, it, it's, it's seen much, much better days. It's essentially bare metal. Instead of having a nice little rubber soft roller, it's bare metal. So I'm guessing all that added weight on here just basically pushed that, that roller right up through the hull. So now the topic for this video is planning your project. And I thought it'd be helpful to kind of walk through the, the thought process that I go through when I'm assessing a project, whether it's something big or something small. Now, ironically, when, you, when you're starting a project, one of the very first things you, do, you need to do is figure out how you're actually going to be finishing the project. And by that I'm referring to are, are you going to be finishing it in gel coat or with paint. Now I've, I've done uh, videos on this comparing and contra contrasting the two. Again, if you haven't seen that, put a pop-up window here. But essentially, knowing how you're going to finish it is going to dictate what types of resins you're able to use as well as what types of glass you're going to be using. Now I, I do a lot of consulting with folks over on, on Patreon, uh, helping them out with their own projects. And on more than one occasion, uh, you know, someone has you know, jumped in on a project, felt they had a pretty good uh, you know, idea of what all was going to be involved, and the very first thing, or the very first step that they did, although it was done correctly, it was you know, a lot of times done incorrectly because they used the wrong resin. Just as an example, uh, if you're looking to finish with gel coat, you don't really want to have any epoxy anywhere in the mix, you know, whether it's doing the glass layup or the fairing or anywhere in between. Uh, if you're finishing with gel coat, which is a polyester base, you're going to need to stick with polyester or vinyl ester base materials start to finish. Now, when you start talking about if you're going to be finishing with a paint, that opens up pretty much a, a, a much larger uh, bubble of options that you're able to kind of uh, source from. Uh, I, I kind of look at it as you know, using a little bit of a, more of like a hybrid approach. So for example, if you're going to be finishing with paint, uh, a lot of times what I'll tend to do is I'll do a lot of my glass work using polyester resin, and then I'll save the epoxy you know, for doing the actual fairing. Now there's a few reasons for doing that, and, and again, that's just kind of a general rule, not always, and I'll explain that a little bit more here in a minute. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, polyester resin is much less expensive than epoxy. So when you're talking about laying up a lot of glass, and especially numerous layers of glass, uh, just right there, uh, there, is a, there can be a pretty significant cost difference between doing all the glass work with poly versus doing all the glass work with epoxy. Now, some other factors that kind of come into this uh, is like what kind of temperatures you're going to be working in. All right. So epoxy, uh, depending on what kind of hardener you're using, epoxy can be used down to temperatures of yeah, around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take, uh, whereas polyester resin or vinyl ester, uh, that's 65 degrees Fahrenheit minimum. So maybe you're doing a project outside and you, you know, just be, be based on where you're living, uh, you're only going to be dealing in 50, 60 degree temps. Well, that right there, if you try to use polyester resin in those types of temps, you're going to run into problems. Whereas poly or with uh, epoxy, you know, no issues whatsoever. Another consideration, I, I guess, to kind of keep in mind when you're planning out this project is, you know, how much working time are you going to need to actually wet out the glass? You know, again, kind of playing off of temperatures here a little bit. Uh, if you're in a warmer climate, uh, polyester resin will set up fairly quick. And depending on how warm, I mean, you could have as little as 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes of working time 
and, and that's it. You know, if you've got a large area that you're trying to wet out and you've only got that small of a window, uh, that's probably not going to go too well. Whereas with epoxy, again, you've got different options as far as what kind of hardener you're going to use. Uh, there, you can use a slow hardener to all of a sudden, you can go from having, say, 5, 10 minutes of working time upwards of, say, 40, 45 minutes of working time. So if you're doing a large area, say, like we're going to be working on, on this hull, or you're doing a transom where there's just a lot of little intricate pieces that kind of need to be jigsaw puzzled together, uh, having that added working time that epoxy offers is very, very handy. The other thing to consider is, and this more comes into play when you're looking at doing repairs rather than actual, you know, top to bottom restorations, but when you're doing like a repair on an isolated area, uh, if, you, if you start digging into it and you've seen that it's already been worked on before, you don't always know what the previous person did. Sometimes you can tell by the color uh, of, the, of, the, of the glass, you know, polyester resin tends to be a little bit more on the greenish side, whereas epoxy is a little bit more on the, you know, a little bit more clear or sometimes on the brownish side. Uh, but you can't always know. So if you're, in an, if you're doing repair on an old repair, uh, not knowing what was used, uh, again, you don't want to, I, I guess, run into any bonding problems, you know, because what if they did the repair using epoxy and you try to go back over top of that using polyester resin? Will it work? Uh, it's generally frowned upon. I mean, it may or may not hold, uh, depending on how important that repair is. If it's below the waterline, that's not something you want to screw around with. You know, if it's just a cosmetic thing that you're dealing with up on, say, like top of a flybridge, you know, if it, if it fails, it's not going to be catastrophic. But when you're, when you're going over old repairs, uh, if you go over with poly, pretty good chance you, you'll be okay, but you might not. Whereas if you go over and do that repair work using uh, epoxy, well, epoxy pretty much sticks to everything. So now, as I mentioned last week, I'm going to be painting this boat. Specifically, I'm going to be going over this with Alexio. And this is going to be my guinea pig for doing a roll demonstration with their new additive. Now, notice I didn't say roll and tip. No tipping. This is going to be rolling only. Uh, Lexio is rolling out a new uh, additive uh, this year, actually this month. And we're going to be giving it a shot and basically using that uh, to see how well it turns out it just rolling alone on the, on the hull of this boat. Now, because I'm going to be planning, because I'm intending to, to paint this, I'm going to take a bit of a hybrid approach to the, the glass work that I'm going to be doing on here. Uh, for the most part, uh, and again, this is kind of a, a just generally speaking, but I'm going to use chop strand matting for going over all the cosmetic areas. So because I'm going to plan on using chop strand matting over the, I guess, over the majority of this hull, again, that's just going to be a cosmetic layer to essentially just, essentially stabilize the surface and make sure that I don't have any more of these surface cracks popping back up. Uh, but since I'm going to be using chop strand matting for this, I'm going to have to use uh, polyester resin for doing all the glasswork on here. Now, once the glasswork is down, then I'll switch over to using an epoxy for doing all the fairing. And there's going to be a couple different types of uh, fairing that I'm going to be using on this, depending on the stage of the project that I'm at. Uh, but I'll, I'll get into more of that when we're actually at that stage of the project. So for now, I think I'm going to get this video edited and uploaded, so that's all done, and then finish sanding the, the other side of this hull so that it's, you know, going into next week, everything is basically sanded down, prepped, and essentially ready to go. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance. If you have any questions, comments, leave those down below, and I do spend probably the first two hours every Sunday morning just kind of monitoring the comments and then replying to as many as I can. So if you have any questions, comments that you'd like to actually have answered, that would be the best time to actually do that. So as always, I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.